Um, so, yeah, I feel like a lot of different things kind of come together in my work, especially being quite transdisciplinary and, uh, and working as an artist and a scholar as well. So I thought I would start uh, with just a little bit of overview about my, my own background and then kind of use that as a, a bridge to talk about uh, techno-solutionism and broken promises, the rise and fall of NFT art. Um, so as uh, Janis introduced, I'm, I'm working between, um, you know, working as an artist in a practical sense and then also um, in media studies and image studies. Um, so I presented my work internationally at institutions, conferences and festivals centered on art and technology across Europe, the UK and the United States. Uh, including at the Transmediale, Ars Electronica, Click, and Art Meets Radical Openness festivals. Um, I've also guest lectured and led academic workshops at the School of Media Art in Chalon in France, uh, the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Art uh, in Edinburgh University, the Luca, Luca School of Art, and also at my alma mater, uh, the IT University of Copenhagen and the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, among some other contexts. So I've, I've published extensively across the multiple fields that I work within, um, in books and journals covering uh, theory, my own artistic practice, and I've also written quite a lot on the work of other artists working with technology. Um, and I have a forthcoming book titled Algorithm Image Art, um, which is scheduled for release in January 2024. And a translation to simplified Chinese will also be published uh, parallel to the, the English tradition, uh, edition uh, in early 2024 as well. Um, so the book looks at what's been referred to as the algorithmic turn uh, in visual media. And it considers how recent methods, including the use of generative models, are grounded in relation to the history of visual, uh, visual media and visual technologies. So that, my, that book expands upon the work of my PhD. Um, and the project was called Machine Learning and Notions of the Image. Um, it was practice-led, but a theoretical look at um, the implications of the adoption of machine learning in contemporary artistic practice. So in my ongoing research, I've been looking into how in recent years, machine learning and artificial intelligence and the discourses around them um, have become very, very hyped um, and widely used and discussed uh, in and outside the technical context that they emerge from. Um, and one of the core arguments of my research is that while machine learning is a relatively new paradigm of image making, it touches on a number of issues that have been explored at length in art and in theories of the image. So these books are just two points of reference that have been very influential in, in shaping that perspective. Uh, Soft Image by Ingrid Hutzwell and Jaime Marie and Iconology, Image, Text, Ideology by W.J.T. Mitchell. Um, so these ideas connect to longer threads in my work, uh, which is deeply informed by the approach of media archaeology, um, which is both a field and a discipline that seeks to better understand contemporary media artifacts in connection to longer historical tendencies that shape them. So it often looks at early precursor technologies to those of today in order to gain a better understanding of how current methods, devices, or perspectives are related to those of the past. So for example, we may look at pre-cinematic devices in relation to film or digital media. Um, so adopting what Siegfried Zielinski calls a deep time perspective of media allows us to draw insights from artifacts from the distant past. 
in contrast to the common tendency of exclusively considering technology in terms of the new. So an important aspect of this work is, um, especially to the con context of this conference, is how conceptual infrastructure is built up around technologies that in turn uh, influence the aesthetics in art and, and the surrounding discourses in important ways. I'm especially curious about the ways that emerging technologies may subvert traditional assumptions, um, especially by questioning who or what the intended audience or interpretive framework uh, of, of art or media or images may be. So current visual culture is increasingly influenced by algorithms that govern the creation, analysis, and circulation of images, often in ways that are not directly visible um, or accessible um, and intelligible to us. Powerful machine learning image generators have recently become uh, accessible to non-experts, enabling artists, designers, and the general public to experiment with new ways of creating images informed by AI. So this shift has contributed to contentious discussions on the new aesthetics and creative practices that have emerged as a result. Um, and very often artists are keen early adopters of emerging methods and technologies. And as I guess we will discuss quite a lot here, often a, a, employing critical approaches in their explorations. Um, so with this bit of context to just get us started, we can get, dig into the main topic, which is uh, crypto or NFT art. And as I think we're all very aware of, around three, three years ago, headlines started to surface around NFTs for art, and the buzz started getting going uh, on the back of several high-profile sales. Uh, for example, Beeple sold his Every Days, the first 5,000 days for $69 million. Celebrities like Justin Bieber, Paris Hilton, and Snoop Dogg showed off the pictures they bought from the Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, even the Trumps got in on the action and uh, started selling limited edition trading cards. And NFTs for memorable meme images, such as this one known as Disaster Girl, also sold for impressive amounts into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But already, um, just in introducing the topic, we veered off course from the subject. What about the art? So to some extent, the use of NFTs answered the problem of how to commodify digital assets. Digital images, for example, are highly ephemeral. They're able to be endlessly copied, reproduced, and transmitted in the form of code or files, as opposed to being confined to a specific material instantiation. And the same issues have been struggled with in the history of art, as, uh, as described as a dematerialization of the art object by Lucy Lupard. The idea of the NFT as a smart contract that could track and help monetize digital assets appealed to many artists because it offers new ways, of, new ways and new platforms for them to make money off their work. Um, and Martin Zeilinger uses a term that I quite like, describing these as monetized graphics. So in this presentation, I'll look at how the NFT art phenomenon relates to the issue of techno-solutionism, which I would define effectively as the proposal that technology can solve existing problems. That's quite generalized, but um, that's what I'm... I'm going to work from. Um, so, yeah, this idea that, that um, technology can solve existing problems, even those that have been created by technology. So, coming from a background in media archaeology, I, I look at tendencies in media and tendency uh, over history, and, and this is an issue that comes up very repeatedly. 
So a good example for this is the idea that renewable energies will solve the societal and environmental problems caused by fossil fuels. But when we take a closer look at the issue, it's not as simple as merely switching out oil-powered vehicles in favor of electric cars. Not only does this introduce new factors, like in this case, the environmental um, and social impact of lithium mining that are needed to produce electric uh, car batteries. It also keeps intact the unsustainable reliance on car culture. So the car itself can be seen from the angle of techno solutionism to have answered the problem of making travel more efficient and also doing away with the previous reliance on horsepower. But a more recent uh, example of this that uh, came up recently is that Lego has been struggling to create more sustainable materials for their products, finding that in their attempts um, it actually entailed a greater degree of pollution um, to try to try to produce um, other materials than actually sticking with the original plastic. Um, but interestingly, they've, they've committed to continuing with that research and, and not taking that as the final word for, um, for good reason. But emerging technologies have a habit of introducing new factors that can have unpredictable consequences. But the bottom line is that technology is not always the best solution to problems caused by other technologies. But looking at how this relates to the context of NFTs for art, there are several aspects where the technology has failed to deliver on its promises. One of these ideas is that NFTs would have a democratizing effect on the art market. Um, and this has been discussed as a way of cutting out the middlemen and the gatekeepers in order to make digital content more accessible to buyers and um, more profitable for creators themselves uh, and, and making an art market that would be more representative uh, of the world. Um, and in some cases, this means giving creatives a seat at the table and a sense of inclusion where they've been otherwise excluded. Another claim that has been made about NFTs um, and cryptocurrencies more generally centers on its power to enable the development of more decentralized economic structures. A third point I've heard um, used a lot in arguments for the necessity of NFTs uh, for art is that it should give artists control over the sale of their work. But the logical paradox here is that artists should seek to control their work by using an external system to commodify it. Um, and a final one that I'll, I'll introduce is, um, is that this would provide more security to make sure provenance can be traced. Um, um, but this was rather visibly not the case, as numerous contemporary artists have had NFTs made of their work um, and put up for sale without their authorization. Additionally, uh, publicly accessible archives of many institutions were plundered as a source for similar activities um, where NFTs were minted for cultural heritage and, and attempted to be sold. Um, so I realized that, that the title for my presentation has the potential to be a bit misleading because I'm not actually going to go into all the ways that I, I believe that NFTs for art have failed um, to live up to these promises that they've, they've been that have been made about them. Um, but rather than analyzing the success or failure of a given technology, I'm quite more interested in the discourses around the technologies. And um, I found that quite a lot of debate on on this particular aspect of the topic can be very unproductive. Um, often with people who are invested um, conceptually and monetarily in crypto art tending to be very resistant to hearing arguments made against it. So a number of other kinds of technologies have been described in similarly generic terms as having um, potential for democratization, decentralization, or putting the users in control. One such example is the internet. Um, 
And of course, it, in, in certain respects, it has lived up to such claims. Um, but again, it has also introduced many unforeseeable aspects, such as the threat posed to democracy by the spread of misinformation uh, on the internet. And another problem with claims like these is that they're very difficult to actually measure. Um, so just one example of this um, that's arisen in response to discussions to the steep computational and environmental cost of minting M NFTs is that there, there's been yet another dubious promise of so-called green NFTs that should solve the problem of the extreme energy consumption of blockchain. Um, but this appears to be a case of greenwashing or at least overstating the reduction of energy use that is achieved. Um, and in this sense, techno-solutionism strikes again and it appears that for any problem that relates to NFTs, the very technology itself is often proposed as the solution. Um, so instead of flogging a dead horse about the crash of uh, crypto and crypto art markets, I just want to summarize by looking at how the statistics look currently. And although often used as a primary justification and a use case for NFTs, ensuring the secure sale of art did not turn out to be um, what, all that it was talked up to be. A recent report investigating the subject found that, quote, the vast majority of NFTs are worthless. And the article states that over 73,000, of the over 73,000 NFT collections they identified in their research, an eye-watering 69,795 of them had a market cap of zero ether. The study also found that four out of five NFTs had not been sold. And they say, the surplus of supply over demand is creating a buyer's market where potential investors are becoming more discerning, carefully evaluating the style, uniqueness, and potential value of NFTs before making a purchase. Um, and this statement really struck me because not only are these basic considerations when we talk about purchasing anything, let alone a work of art, um, it's very unrealistic to expect buyers not to consider these characteristics. But I think this discourse is kind of indicative of, of a lot of discussions that have been had that, that it's all just, um, yeah, kind of unrealistic. The, the idea that, that um, ever, all this investment is just going to occur without the art actually um, having value to, to kind of back, it, back itself up. Um, so a number of critical commentators have brought up um, similar issues and, um, and something that has been discussed quite a lot is the, the general lack of artistic value in many NFT art projects. And that's not to say that our, all art involving NFTs is without artistic merit, but, but the market has been flooded with instances that are very questionable. These kinds of works typically employ computation merely as a way of producing meaningless variation um, for the purpose of creating monetary value, often with little concern for the aesthetic, artistic, or conceptual dimensions of each digital entity. And something that I've noticed uh, when looking at this phenomenon is that conversations about NFT art typically center uh, again, on monetary concerns, rather than discussing ideas, aesthetics, or stories entailed in the artworks themselves. Um, so the idea of monetary value being a driver of art is not something that is new or unheard of in the mainstream art world, where we have artists like Jeff Koons or Damien Hirst, um, and many others have explicitly worked with systems of value either through the work or through their, uh, the way that their work fits into larger economic structures of the mainstream art market. Um, the iconic um, work Mer d'Artiste uh, by Piero Manzoni uh, quite provocatively toyed with such ideas 
uh, where the artist sold his excrement at the running price of gold by weight. Um, but thinking about all these factors, especially during the peak hype in spring 2021, I got the sense that NFT art was something of an emptying out of the image, turning it into a placeholder for speculative value. And although that might sound like a rather negative assessment, as a theorist of the image, I actually find that really intriguing. Um, and so I, I used that, that um, idea um, and explorations on that uh, to, create, to create a work that is going to be presented here uh, in the exhibition. So we'll see it later, later in the opening. Um, so the piece is called Cryptographics, and it was commissioned in the context of a residency that I did in, uh, from April to May 2021, so really at the kind of, at like a very high point in uh, hype around NFTs. And it, so the residency was at ONB Labs, which is part of the Austrian National Library in Vienna. And what is on view in the exhibition is actually documentation of the original work, which is accessible online uh, in the ONB Labs art space. And it's a net-based project. I will just show it really quickly, like in my browser. Um, so just to give like a little overview of the kind of mechanics of the work. I don't want to talk about it too much because there's lots of potential for us to, to discuss that more um, in the duration of the, the program. So the premise of that, that residency was to work with the digital archives of the library in some way. And their collections include digital scans of archival Austrian postcards, musical scores, legal documents, text about the planned language Esperanto, a small collection of fragments of papyri, and digital rec records of Austrian periodicals. Um, so really a bit random and all over the place. Um, so I found that um, premise of the residency a bit challenging because I wasn't that interested in any of the assets themselves. Um, but I, I was more interested in the structural tendencies and like, um, yeah, relationships of, of, yeah, images to each other or the structures behind them. Um, and it made me interested to look more into the relationship between managing digital culture and what was going on in this uh, at that time in the NFT art phenomenon. Um, so what I ended up doing was directly blanking out individual images from of, um, assets from their collection and making their vi visual content less pertinent than the processes behind them. Um, and in a way kind of objectifying or trying to like empty out the, the image uh, as I was kind of finding that the NFT art phenomenon was doing. Um, so these are some of the early experiments that I was doing of different ways of um, playing around with that. Um, and as in the, the previous images, some of the visual content was still accessible, but I found it a little bit more interesting um, to obscure or redact the, the visual information entirely, keeping only the, the proportions of each image. Um, yeah, and then, so the components of the work are, the, are these kind of um, image, image fragments and then um, a text that is kind of obscured by the, these images that that compiles and incorporates different snippets of conversations from, from social media buzz about NFTs. Um, so the concept of the work came from thinking about how images may function as placeholders for value rather than physical objects that are prized primarily for their aesthetic, material, or cultural uh, attributes. 
And uh, a term that I've been using for that is cryptographics, with that, which I think of in a dual sense. So not only can we think about images as being associated with NFTs and cryptocurrencies, but it's, I also think it's interesting to think about um, how art could play the role of um, encrypting uh, value. So by this, I mean that artworks could be thought of in, in similar terms to blocks in the blockchain, um, that their content and their uniqueness then acts as a backing for the value that can be associated with them, which is like the very, very traditional um, mainstream art market way of treating artworks, in my opinion. Um, so the concept of the work uh, emerged out of my examination of the idea of the operative image or operational image, which Haroon Faroqi describes as images that do not represent an object, but rather are part of an operation. Um, so in the association of images with NFTs, one could argue that their aesthetic and artistic roles uh, as images are superseded by their operative role. Um, yeah, and I'm, I, I guess also, in a sense, I was, Faroqi worked quite a lot with the non-visual aspects of, of images, and, and so that's another aspect that I was quite interested in. Um, so I feel like the work and the process of, of making it brought up a lot more questions for me than it answered, but perhaps that's precisely what makes it interesting to me. Um, and of course, we can kind of spend more time with that work uh, in the exhibition context. Um, but to kind of try to bring that bag of, uh, uh, mixed bag of ideas together um, and wrap things up, so I think we can take some insights away from looking into this phenomenon of the NFT hype um, and rather than focusing on just where it went wrong. And I believe that the failure to come through of many of the expectations that people had for it is that many of the problems that NFTs sought to solve were not technological but actually social in nature and they therefore require other approaches to change. So I think it's important to look at the fact that it's, it's not unreasonable to seek out and work towards more democratic, decentralized, representative, sustainable, and fair art markets. But to do this, I, I believe we need to take care to, to build structures that embody these principles um, rather than attempting to, to take technological shortcuts uh, uh, to find those answers. So thank you for your attention.